Oh my goodness! Oh good gracious! Good gravy! We're back everyone! <laughs> yeah, hello everyone and welcome back to my walkthrough of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door! In this part I'm gonna be doing some important and not so important fun stuff just to sort of kind of wrap things up here on the outside world before we head over to the uh, uh, last 50 floors of the Pit of 100 Trials, as well as the accompanying uh, trouble in the Trouble Center that has to do with the 50th floor of the Pit of 100 Trials. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is go back over to Glitzville, because I forgot something over here at the phone booth. Uh, William Clark told me about this a little while back. He also told me about something else that I shall also be able to show over here at the phone booth area. Um, basically, after the whole Chapter 3 mystery fiasco that went on, uh, the phone has some other purposes. Well, not so much purposes as it is fun dialogue. <laughs> and, uh, let's go check that out. Shall we? Go 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 Yeah, I'm singing go 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 to the song. So yeah, this phone booth right here. Remember this? Remember this? Let's check it out. Huh? Who are you? Prank calls are uncool. Mario, Professor Frankly here. I mean, Mario, Professor Frankly here. Be careful out there. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> huh? Who are you? Ah, oh, the prank call on again. Yeah, they're sort of randomized here. Hi, am I the 987-300... I mean, uh, 987,034th caller? Did I win the free tickets? <laughs> ah! Uh, local time is now... Snack time? <laughs> well, hi there. Hi there, Murphy! It's Scoop, the mayor of Battleburg! Oh, Scoops! <laughs> Yeah, so all the sorts of characters can call over at this phone here. Sorry, Professor Frankly, we careful out there. Seeing if there's any more going on. Hello? No, he don't deliver. Uh, how many more can there be? The weather in Glissville today will be sunny with a chance of more sun. It's above the clouds, stupid. <laughs> oh, and here's the other thing that I wanted to show here. You can do this pretty much any time you can back through dialogue is if you press the Z button on the GameCube controller, you can go back to dialogue that you've already read. Isn't that handy? Yeah, I should have showed that much earlier in the walkthrough, but I totally forgot about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's any more dialogue here. Hi, brother Luigi here. Are you holding up? <laughs> um, hmm, hmm. I think I've drained this sucker dry. So let's go over to the next location that I would like to show, shall we? I think I'll resume my cut right over here, because it's probably closer to the spot that I would like to go in comparison to the other side of the entrance to the underground here. What I want to go to is this place right here. Remember this locked building here that uh, we that was unlocked once we went through the teleporter? And uh, look at that! The teleporter works! Do we dare go to a destroyed x naught base? Well, let's see what's over there, I guess. <laughs> huh? It still exists? I thought the place blew up! It's... this is impossible! How could... no! How just... how? How is it still here? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I came back here to show you, because there's actually some stuff that's in Well, I, I don't want to say important to show you, but it is sort of important to show you um, as a little bit of closure to the uh, game's storyline. So let's go all the way back down to sub-level 4. By the way, obviously, uh, since you still have access to the x base, you can get uh, any stuff that you've missed uh, here, you know, from before and whatnot. So, yeah, anyway, I went down to the lower floor here to check out some stuff. I don't know, I just want to see if there's anything over here, because I never really checked out this, uh, you know, Peach's Room post-game here. I don't think there's going to be anything, but I just want to see you just for kicks. Maybe you'll be able to have uh, Mario take a shower here. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think there would be anything here. But anyway, the reason why I came all the way down here is because... Remember Tech? 
yeah, he got deleted, and then he got blown up, or at least we thought he got deleted and blown up. Well, we're gonna go back over to his room and see what is up in here. Huh? Mario, I am pleased that I could see you again. I detonated explosives after you left to ensure the base would never be used for evil. Of course, I was destroyed in the resulting explosion. But, one day I regained consciousness, and all was as before. Yes, everything. I do not comprehend why, but... As I regained consciousness, I saw a light, and I thought I heard Princess Peach's voice. Well, Peach's voice. <laughs> Sorry. How is Princess Peach? If she is happy, then I too am happy. I continue to hope with the continued happiness of you, Peach, and all others. So, it appears that Tech has survived. I don't know how he survived the explosions. What, what I'm assuming is uh, that after the base blew up, uh, x knots that were left over must have rebuilt the base or something like that, because there are, you know, x knots still roaming around probably somewhere, but... They must have did a really speedy job at rebuilding the base. Really, I'm not sure what happened, but there's your closure as to what happened to Tech. Tech is perfectly fine, although, well, maybe not all that fine. I mean, you know, Tech is Tech. <laughs> but yeah, isn't that cool to know? Not a lot of people know about this, but yeah, Tech is indeed alive and well here. And, uh, well, you know, Peach in the game storyline as of right now is still technically kidnapped, even though I already beat the Shadow Queen, because the game doesn't save after uh, you beat the Shadow Queen, so you end up back before you beat the Shadow Queen, and yeah! <laughs> so that's why Tech is wondering about Princess Peach's safety, but still, I, I still really do wonder what really happened to Tech. I mean, you did see the explosions happen! So, oops, I went a little too far. So, it's it's really odd that Tech would be able to survive that, or the base would be able to survive that, unless it's some really strong base and it just blew up all living things on the inside or something, I don't know. <laughs> but Tech, he is a survivor. <laughs> uh, the next thing that I'd like to do is go back over to um, defeat an Amazing Daisy. Well, not so much defeat an Amazing Daisy because I've done some, you know, I've done it before. But what I'd like to do is more so show you how to defeat an Amazing Daisy because I still haven't done that. Whoops, I, I took the wrong pipe. Whoops, I was just kind of blabbering along. I wasn't really thinking about where I was going. Of course, the pipe pointing down is gonna go down. The pipe pointing up goes up. <laughs> but anyway, um. The reason why I would like to show you how to defeat an Amazing Daisy is because when you're preparing for the Pit of 100 Trials, you might want to be at a higher level than you are typically. So, yeah, there's the easiest way to... Oops, ah, poopers, what am I doing here? I'm feeling rusty. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, but, yeah, if you... Go and grind some, I mean, if you want to grind some levels for the Pit of 100 Trials, the best way to do so is, by far, to take out a bunch of Amazing Daisies uh, over at the woods here. So, I'm gonna go cut over until I find one. By the way, you can find Amazing Daisies pretty much in any uh, enemy encounter at the woods. Not at the house, but at the woods. Ooh, so spooky! Let's see if we can find the Maisy Daisy. No, not in the, the first encounter. Ah, poopers, of course, that would be far, far too easy. Well, in any case, I am going to run away from every battle I come across here. <laughs> just because it'll speed things up. Um, but I, I'll just be looking for an Amazy Daisy, and that will be about it. So, I just want to get first strikes on them. Just to make sure that I knock down their HP quicker than they would otherwise be knocked down, because I'm going to battle anyway, so I might as well uh, get a nice good start on them. Nope, no Amazing Daisy here. Uh, by the way, I chose Vivian to uh, sort of do the finishing blow to Amazing Daisies, and you'll see why once I uh, finally encounter one. But, aha! I thought I was going to get hit, hit there because it turned around as I was swinging, but we're okay, we're okay. 
Uh, I'm probably never gonna see an Amazing Day Zero in these parts, am I? Just because I'm commentating. <laughs> so I should probably cut ahead until I do finally find one, because who knows how long it's gonna take. Oh, good lord. I've officially been through the woods battling those, well, I should say checking those four enemies that you see along the way three times! And I still haven't come across an Amazing Daisy! Random number generator is just not my friend today. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to reset what kinds of enemies appear in those battles, gotta go over inside the house here and then go back out of the house. And on the way back through, uh, once you go through all four enemies again, I should say if you go through all four enemies again, or want to go through all four enemies again, you gotta go all the way back to the town when you're going through on uh, that side. So when you're coming into the forest, you wanna go into the house to reset the enemies. When you're coming out of it, you wanna go into the town. It's basically, uh, basically what happens is the enemy random number generator thing resets every time you do a transition point and those transition points happen to be those spots so that's all you have to do to do that every time you're grinding for amazing daisies but I'm quite surprised I'm having such bad luck here considering that I was able to uh, uh, grind myself up to some decent levels here I'm at level 26 right now uh, from doing so off camera because you know that'd be kind of tedious to show how to I mean show all that grinding that I was doing um, On camera, but you know, it was just a matter of that. I just wanted to get it out of the way I'm not really a fan of grinding and really I don't oops, you don't I don't really think you have to Grind in this game at all, but since I'm going into the pit of 100 trials. I'm just being extra cautious about that <laughs> Uh, it's what I have what the stats that I have right now are probably overkill. Ah, oh, there it is! An amazing Daisy! Yeah! I lost concentration to do my stylish move. Alright, now for the amazing Daisy, I like to do two different things. Uh, both involving the special here. Uh, you can either do a supernova, which will do 16 damage to it guaranteed, and then you finish it off with a partner. Uh, you know, a partner that can do four damage. Uh, which is probably the easiest way to do it, but what I like to do just to save time, you know, in our backtracking is to do art attack because it uses four uh, star points as opposed to six star points, which means that you can use it twice per run without having to go back to the hotel to take a nap and regain your star points or, you know, regain the star points battle after battle. So I'm going to do the art attack method here because it's a little bit more difficult to pull off. Uh, Supernova, as you know, is really easy to pull off. All you want to do here is just do little baby circles around the Amazing Daisy and only the Amazing Daisy, really, because you need to be able to circle it enough times before your time runs out so that you'll be able to knock it out. Oh, I was a little bit late there. But that's why I have Vivian, just to be able to finish stuff off here, because I have Fiery Jinx going on in the his house. So let's do that. And watch the experience points you get from that sucker. <laughs> How's that for level grinding speediness? Well, if you should happen to come across one. <laughs> So, isn't that a nice method to gain levels really quickly? Well, you know, providing that you actually come across one. So yeah, if you want to get your levels up nice and fast, go to that forest, check out those four enemies, see if you can destroy some amazing daisies, and you should be quite pleased with the speed that you can level up your character. Uh, I got my character from the level you last seen it at up to level 26 and probably... Oh, half hour or so, I think, somewhere around there. It's still kind of excessive, but it's eh, it's not as bad as some other RPGs can be. You know, like the Dragon Warriors slash Dragon Quest, the Final Fantasies. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go back over to uh, Rogueport and get myself set up for the next, I guess you could say, optional type of thingamajig. I should mention that another thing that I was doing off camera was that I was grabbing a bunch of items. Well, I should say gathering a bunch of items. Yeah, I've got a boatload of awesome items here for the Pit of 100 Trials, so I am good to go here. 
Uh, although, if, if you would like to recover both 50 HP and 50 flower points at the same time, uh, combine the Ultra Shroom and the Jam and Jelly into the Jelly Ultra using Tasty. And, uh, yeah, I mean, wait, Zesty! <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the first Paper Mario. And, yeah, uh, you know, use her cooking skills to do so. But anyway, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'd like to go back over to the badge place because I want to sell some badges in order to reach 256 coins. I've also sold a bunch of badges already to get the items uh, that I've collected already. But let's just see what I can sell somewhere here. Just, let's... Uh, I, I'm probably better off cutting her, aren't I? <laughs> you know what? I'll just sell both HP plus partner badges. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not both of them. Uh, I'll, how about... Nah, mm, mm, eh, uh, mm, eh. Okay, one HP plus partner and one flower P... Uh, one flower plus partner. Alright, the reason why I want to do that is because, I, as I said, I need to get 256 coins. But why do I need to get 256 coins? Well, look at Vivian Sprite. <laughs> anyway, the reason why I need to get 256 coins is because of these, the Super Luigi books. I already bought the first four of them off camera. Um, the first one cost 64 coins, likely a reference to the Nintendo 64. Uh, the next three books here cost 128 coins apiece, likely a reference to Super Mario 128, the unreleased game. And the last book here costs, you guessed it, 256 coins. Coming soon to theaters. <laughs> Alright, so let's buy that. And now we have all five Super Luigi books. Which means... It's time for us to read them. Oh yeah! Now, this is going to be like the final bits of the Luigi story here. Believe it or not... These books even conflict with the stories that Luigi and his partner already have conflicting stories on. <laughs> so it's very, very questionable if Luigi actually went on his adventure. You'll see why as we get into it. So let's start by reading book one here. Have you ever experienced a time when no matter how hard you tried, you failed, and the time you spent felt wasted? If you ever feel such pains of regret, try to remember this tale. The story of a young man's quest to save a sweet princess. Super Luigi, Volume 1, the quest begins. A day dawned like any other, but little did Luigi know the letter he was about to receive would forever change his destiny. So Luigi, dangerous besets us on all sides, and we beg your help. The foul chestnut king, likely Goombos, <laughs> has stolen our treasure, our princess. The letter was from Minister Krep of the Waffle Kingdom, a man aware of Luigi's many adventures. He had many adventures? He did, really? Hmm. Where was I at the time? <laughs> he knew only Luigi could save them. Not Mario? Let's move on. <laughs> Charge with this dire task. Luigi wasted no time curtailing the heroic meal he was making. Then he packed for his deadly journey. Knowing that his older, Though less talented brother was out on a no doubt inconsequential errand, Luigi took a moment to leave a note. Mix a keel mango with a peachy peach to whip up a fruit parfait. These cryptic words were all over were all Luigi wrote before leaving. I'm guessing that's a little bit of a recipe hint. <laughs> Upon reaching the Waffle Kingdom, Luigi was greeted by pure misery, an endless flow of tears over the kidnapping of Princess Eclair. Arriving at the castle, Luigi is greeted by Master Krep, who carefully handed him a compass base with only one intact section. Our land has a second treasure, the marvelous compass. Find its seven parts and find Eclair! So it began. To be continued. So that was book one. <laughs> it's a pretty short book and all the books are really short. Uh, but I'm gonna go through each of them regardless. Uh, allies and adventure! It's a little warm, Luigi muttered, the sweat dripping from his brow as he followed the compass up, rumple bump volcano side. Must find the secret. God, oh. While Luigi had guts to spare, he did need a guide, and he found one in Bluey, a blooper he met in town. 
Brave Bluey, join Luigi and instantly proved to be an invaluable. With his aid, Luigi bested a savage statue that protected the treasure. That treasure was none other, other than a piece of the marvelous compass. A piece that pointed west to Plump Belly Village. The second Luigi <clears throat> saw Plump Belly vi Village, he knew something was amiss. All was woe, and Luigi soon learned the reason why from the mayor. The town was at the mercy of a sinister serpent from Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, no, I, I'll forget it. <laughs> Who demanded sacrificial lasses. Burning with, indige, burning with ignition, Luigi formed a team of liberators. A fierce bob warrior named Jerry joined his crew, and chose, not surprisingly, to stick with Luigi for the duration of his quest for Eclair. By the way, uh, I do believe uh, Luigi's partners are all based off of and named off of food. Like, I'm... Like, wasn't Jerry, um, a red bob which is likely a, a parody, or not parody, a reference to a cherry bomb? Something like that, but yeah. And, and like, uh, Bluey there was based off of the calamari, you know, food thing, and yeah, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Fortified by his allies, Luigi strode on into the lair of the beast, a foul two-headed snake. No time to think! Luigi sprang forth. Twin heads snapped at his heels, fangs dripping venom. Then, as one mouth gaped wide to swallow Luigi, the other crept behind. Our hero sensed the treachery and feigned before leaping. Uh, wait, and faint, uh, fainted before leaping? What the? Uh, 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 mm, huh? Am I get mis under misinterpreting the, or actually misunderstanding the wording of that? Oh, whatever. Let's just move on. The heads collided and the beast ate itself. The prize, a compass piece. The villagers begged their savior to stay with them, but a grim face Luigi pressed bravely onward. To be continued. Yeah, I don't think that uh, the heads colliding and eating itself were a part of Luigi's original story. Do you? I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, the voice of a princess. Daunting Luigi's next tests came in the form of a cart race on Circuit Break Island, where he won both the contest and a compass piece. The race was fraught with danger, but Luigi pressed through adversity to win. All viewers were awed by Luigi's revolutionary racing style. That's not how it sounded, <laughs> you know, in the initial stories. The mechanic who built Luigi's racing machine, a buzzy beetle named Torque, was so stunned by Luigi's race techniques that he joined him. No, that's not what he said, I don't think. <laughs> Reinvigorated, Luigi set for Jazzafraz Town, where he made his stage debut. Hazy, a noted Daisy producer, gave Luigi a key role. Playing the part of an earth spirit to pure perfection, he did? What? From what I heard, he flubbed everything about that play. <laughs> Luigi stole the show's... <laughs> Luigi stole the show. Hazy's faith in Luigi's natural acting talents was rewarded. The performance won one prize, which yielded another compass piece. Hazy turned from teacher to pupil, joining Luigi on his quest. It was at this time that Luigi's heart, usually draped in the cool comfort of a hero's resolve, began to warm with thoughts of Princess Eclair. This came to be because every time the magic compass pointed to a new place, her gentle war words rang in his ears, touching him to his very soul. The voice spoke of eternity, of stars in the heavens. It wept for those blind to love. It gave comfort in the face of fear and loneliness. Though he had never seen her, our hero was tormented by visions of this fair-hearted man. All he could do was press onward. The compass points towards rapturous ruins. Only two parts of the compass awaited, and Eclair had won. To be continued. The continuation! <laughs> the Showers of Truth. Foot sore and weary, Luigi finally found the rapturous ruins beyond Grimble Forest. Within them, time and space were lost in nothingness. With the pale emptiness, Luigi found a young sleeping boy. Our hero called out gently, and the youth woke from his long, long slumber. My name is Canberry, and I have waited for you for the last thousand years. The boy went on to tell Luigi the secret truths of an ancient land. He said that the Marvelous Compass had been created by the ancient Luff people, who used its powers to fort a foretelling to rule the world. But the Luff Empire was then cursed by the Compass and fell into ruin. 
the survivors dismantled the compass and hid its pieces. Cranberry was the last of the ancient race. His role was to wait until one with a noble heart came to take the burden of the future. None but Luigi could have shouldered this weight. The boy gave him the compass piece and said, Fear the curse, but find your eclair. Luigi accepted the part. The boy's words burned into his brain. His duty fulfilled. The boy began to fade into the blank nothingness. As he faded from sight, a look of joy lit Cranberry's face. As Luigi gaped, both boy and ruins vanished, leaving our hero into a dark in a dark wood. With six of the parts united, the compass now pointed to the final parts, to the quest's end, to hate strong tower. And then her voice spoke. Princess Eclair's voice begged for help from the void, pleading for a hero. Luigi's heart burst the flame. To be continued. Final book! <laughs> Journey's End. At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hate Strong Tower. Luigi rallied his allies. We will defeat the Chestnut King. We must! Friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the fell Chestnut King. But then he heard a voice and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by Krep in a bid for the throne. At that moment, the villainous Krep appeared. The marvelous compass piece, please. Hand it over, and the Luff Empire will rule again! <laughs> Luigi and company were no match for the might of Krep, their true enemy. But then the, the compass piece in Eclair's tiara shone forth! It bestowed the future sight on Luigi. Knowing Krep's every move, he smote the fiend with his mallet, and with that, he was all finally over. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace. But Luigi regretted not gazing farther into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty and who stood at her side. But it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which remained exactly as he had left it, a cool comfort for his heavy hearts. Taking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial has sapped his strength, and he soon fell asleep. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair, and sleeping Luigi spoke, I shall return. The end. And that was the most beautiful story in history. <laughs> Alright, so... That pretty much closes up all that I wanted to show here um, before we get into the Pit of 100 Trials. So with that, I'm going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next part when I start the, well, the last 50 floors of the Pit of 100 Trials, as well as the final Trouble Center quest. Excited? You should be. Hey, your sprite's fixed.